For me, this bike is the perfect embodiment of the style of riding I love on a drop bar road bike at the moment. It's not about Strava, it's not about watts per kilo, it's not about KOMs, it's not about the A to B. Instead, it's that freedom to take any route you want, all limits removed. It's about exploring, it's about adventure, and above all, it's about having fun. I'm David and this is my very own personal Fairlight Cycles Sican. Now some of you might have seen me talk about this bike on another channel previously but I've never shared it on my own personal YouTube channel so this is my first look in-depth review of this very lovely bike. So Fairlight Cycles is a small British company with a couple of models in the range and this the Sican sits bang in the middle at an all-road gravel adventure bike. It's a steel frame, it's a Reynolds 853 frame with some lovely details and their own carbon fibre fork. And the distinguishing feature on this bike is a massive tyre clearance, as you can see, demonstrated by these Sendero 47mm wire tyres. So a big tyre clearance, big capability for riding any terrain, whether it's road, gravel, dirt and everything in between. What drew me to the bike is the exquisite attention to detail, the engineering on show in some of the details on the frame, and my long love affair with steel and the quality that it offers, especially on a bike like this, the extra bit of compliance it offers, that lovely ride quality that's hard to replicate in other materials. Don't get me wrong, I love carbon, I love aluminium, but steel is a very special material and I think it works really well on an all-terrain gravel bike, whatever you might want to call it. A few words on the build kit on this bike. Now Fairlight will sell you a number of specs from Shimano GRX to SRAM, whatever your budget is, but I bought the frame set, the frame and fork and built it up myself. I've had this bike for about a year and a half now I think and I've changed quite a few bits on it over that time. I've been testing different wheels and tyres and components, handlebars and changed a few bits and bobs. But this spec as you see is how I've been running it for the last couple of months and it's worked really well. So I've gone for a Shimano one by group set. I built a bike up before GRX was launched, which is why I have a Ultegra RX rear mech with a clutch mechanism, but it's essentially the same as the latest GRX. I've got now new GRX Di2 shifters, which I absolutely love. I love the shape of those. The more prominent uh, hood shape and the lever blades give much more control when you're riding off-road and down tricky descents. Electronic gearing, hydraulic disc brakes, and the crank set is a Praxis carbon chain set. Very nice design, um, works extremely well. It's very stiff, very light, and complements the Shimano group set. Gearing choice is very much personal and down to each individual rider and the terrain you're riding over. At the moment, I'm running a 42 tooth chainring on the front and an 1134 cassette on the back. And that works well for uh, road and uh, kind of gravel track exploring. I had run an 11.42 on the back, which really pushes the Ultegra RX mech to the limits, but it does work. And for hillier, more off-roading, I go for the bigger cassette. But when I'm just riding my local roads here, which are hilly, but not super steep, I stick with 11.34, which gives a nice uh, tighter range, especially on the road at high speeds. But as I said, 11.40, 11.42 for more uh, challenging terrain, or if I'm using a few bike packing bags to add weight, and I want the lower gears. What wheels and tires to run on a gravel bike is one of the questions I get asked all the time. I'm gonna do a separate video on tire choice and wheel size coming up, so make sure you stick around and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that. But for the last few weeks, I've been running these Hunt 650B wheels. So 650B is smaller than 700, wide profile aluminum tubeless rim. And I've got these lovely looking WTB Sendero tires. So they're based on the byway in the horizon, a uh, fat slick tyre that's been around for a while. But as you can see, they've added some big knobs to the tyres. So I've been running tyres for the last couple of months and through the winter we had a lot of rain and we had a lot of mud. And the knobs on these tyres give a lot more traction in slippery terrain. And the last few weeks we've seen some lovely dry weather and it's dried out as you can see, I mean it's dusty as anything at the moment. But I've stuck with the tyres just because I haven't found a time to change them to something slicker and faster. But even though they're knobby tires and they're better suited to mud, I found them really good 
in dry, loose conditions. Quite good cornering traction on single track trails and not actually that slow or noisy on the road. So not much drag, not much rolling resistance um, penalty. So I kept them on and I think they look really good. I think they give the bike a really purposeful sort of four by four Land Rover Defender look. So I've kept them on and I think it's a good combination. The smaller wheels, just to touch on the benefits of smaller wheels, the bike feels more nimble and agile at slow speed and through slow turns, because there's less kind of wheel size to move around, less wheel mass. They get up to speed more quickly, but higher rolling speeds aren't quite as good as a 700c wheel with a 40 mil tire in my experience. But um, for fun and for flicking it around corners and bombing down rocky descents, I'm liking the small wheels with a chunky tire. Items I have changed quite a bit on this bike are the control points, so the handlebar and the saddle and the seat post. At the moment, I'm running a short NV stem matched to a nice MV seat post just for uh, continuity. But I have changed seat post a few times. I put on a specialized CGR post for a bit more compliance at the back end, but it looked a bit ugly, so I put the MV back on. Running my favorite fabric saddle, um, really good choice. Good amount of flex in the saddle base, so a bit more comfort on off-road terrain and just a nice shape, good padding. I can't fault it at all. So pick a saddle you like and stick with it. That's my advice. Then for handbar, I have changed handbar a few times. I've been testing different handbars. I previously used the Envy gravel handbar, but I found the flare a bit too extreme. And the problem was it really cants the hoods over in quite an extreme angle. I didn't really like it to be honest. So I'm now using this Zip XPLR handlebar. I'll put a link to the review down below. Uh, so it's nice 42 width in the hoods. A bit wider in the drops because they're flared, but not an extreme flare, just enough to give you a bit more control on a descent or if you're hooning on the road. And the hoods are in a fairly normal road bike position. So I'm liking these handlebars. They're not too stiff for an alloy handlebar and the weight is pretty good for the money as well. So I can definitely recommend these handlebars if you want a lightly flared adventure handlebar for your adventure bike. What I really absolutely love about this bike is how nicely put together the frame is and some of the details on the frame. In particular, this slender overlie top tube is just beautiful. Just a lovely shape. The weld quality as well is fantastic, really nicely done. Got a nice oversized head tube at the front for the tapered fork steering tube. The down tube is also overlies as well and it's really nicely welded to the head tube and it's wider at the bottom bracket where we find a external threaded 68 millimeter wide bottom bracket. So nice and easy to fit a threaded bottom bracket. And it's a high quality Reynolds 853 tube set as well. So one of the best tube sets you can buy. Definitely one of the best choices if you want a high quality steel frame. Then you'll notice the cables are externally routed which I don't have a problem with. I like the simplicity of external cable routing. It makes building a bike easier. So the brake hose goes down the down tube and because it's bike DI2, the cables for the gearing go inside the down tube and it's all very easy to build. If you have a mechanical group set, the cable will be external and they do different plates. They have a small bolt on the bottom of the down tube and you put a small uh, cable guide on there. Very neatly done, a CNC machined um, or 3D printed, I can't remember. So that's a nice detail. Inside the main frame, there are two bottle cage mounts and there's a third bottle cage mount on the bottom of the down tube. So ideal for carrying lots of water on long distance bike packing adventure rides. And moving towards the back of the frame, we find some exquisite tube shaping. So Dom Thomas, the designer behind this bike, spent a lot of time maximizing the tire clearance at the rear end by careful shaping of the tubes. Now, designing a bike to maintain the narrow road Q factor of the cranks and getting the massive tire clearance you want on a bike like this is a really tricky job because the space for chain stays around the bottom bracket is really pinched in, so there's not much space there. And the shaping on the tubes is quite impressive. Um, so they've done a really good job there. They managed to also route the cable or the brake hose, should I say, along the chain stay as well, so uh, no interference there. The seat stays are nice and slender, nice skinny shape. They go around the rear tire. Got rack mounts, as you can see, mudguard mounts. And probably the most impressive detail are the dropouts. Now, dropouts aren't something many people get excited about, although some people do in some corners of the internet. And the dropouts on this bike are lovely and show that attention to detail that makes this bike really stand out. They work with a company called Bentley Components to work on the, the fabrication for the flat mount adapter there so really nicely done i mean what attention to detail that just looks beautiful 
a small little logo there. A 12 mil rear axle as well, so no, nice and solid set up rack and mudguard mounts again. So uh, lots of attention to detail, They've done a really good job on that. And it really shows when you spend a lot of time looking over the bike, there's more details that come out as you spend more time uh, running your eye up and down it. So that's been a run through of my very own personal Fairlight Cycle Sican, which I actually put my hand in my pocket and bought with my own hard earned money. And it's a bike I've been using for the last year, year and a half. It's my go-to adventure gravel bike. And it's a bike for me that just lets me ride wherever I want. Here in the Cotswolds, I'm lucky to have a fast network of bridleways and farm track like this one here that I can ride and link together with quiet country lanes. And a bike like this is just absolutely ideal because there's nowhere it's out of depth, there's nowhere it struggles to perform extremely well. And just for going out riding and exploring and having fun, not worrying about the KOMs and average speeds or Stravas, and just exploring and getting back to the roots of why you love cycling, that sense of freedom that provides, this bike delivers all that. With superb ride quality from the steel frame, ample tyre clearance for any tyres and wheels I want. And I think my build, the one by build with Shimano GRX DIT, uh, is flawless. There's nothing I would change in it really. Although I am tempted by a SRAM ETAP group set perhaps, but um, yeah, maybe changes on the horizon. But that's another video. It might be your first video that you've seen on my Fairlight Cycles, but it might be the third or fourth because I ranted about this bike a few times previously. But I'd love to know what you think of my bike. Uh, is it a thumbs up, thumbs down? Got any questions about anything on this bike? Do let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, your appreciation is always welcome. Uh, feedback, always welcome too as well. So let me know what you think of it. And um, yeah, I'm just happy to share this bike with you. Okay, it's such a, a bike I love riding and I've got such a, a personal attachment to. So um, yeah, there we go. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed watching, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more tech reviews and stuff coming up soon. So make sure you hang around. Uh, but that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you all again soon.